questions? Oh, sorry, um, to get everyone's consent, uh, you will have the got it button and you probably have to click on it to consent to being recorded. <laughs> Do you want you want to start, Simon? I mean, I and then I can. I, I wonder if I, I I need to sort of like do the general intro again, given that we've already done around. But for the for the for the watchers of the uh, yeah. Oh okay 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 hi 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 everyone uh welcome to uh Malaysia Art Resource Index or Index Sunni, Index Sumber Sunni Malaysia. Uh, so uh as a general sort of like intro, what we're trying to do here is to build an open, collaborative, multilingual, uh, 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 digital sort of like uh, resource that is community owned and supported. And uh, we're really now trying to sort of like expand our editorial network so that it can actually reflect, you know, we have that sort of like, uh, you know, whole range of expertise and, um, uh, and partners with uh, a different kind of like, uh, background and experiences to help us to sort of like reflect this multilingual and uh, uh, kind of resource that we want to build. Right? Uh, so uh, the prin principally, I think the, um, uh, if you have already sort of explored our uh, website, uh, which is hosted on Notion, uh, should I share the screen? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so this would is how our main sort of like resource page would look like. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, uh, there is uh, this enter or muscle kind of like tab uh, further down after the short introduction and clicking on it will take you to our Zotero group library interface. And essentially our database is hosted on Zotero. Uh, and, uh, you know, after sort of much deliberation, uh, we came up with the idea that maybe the tarot is uh, quite an easy to use kind of like a, a database organizational uh, management system to help us to uh, build up this sort of like uh, resource library that we want to uh, work on together collaboratively. I think, uh, you know, if you ask Beth, if you ask myself, or if you ask Hanim, or as Rahel, each of us have our own sort of like original story, our origin story, how we sort of like, you know, came to, came together to, uh, you know, to want to, uh, you know, start, initiate uh, something like this. Uh, for me, uh, during the height of the pandemic, I was uh, really trying to sort of consolidate all the resources I've been building on uh, 19th century and early 20th century uh, uh, colonial his historical sources on the Malay world, and it well, it was sort of like an attempt to sort of it, it was building on uh, you know a series of workshops that I've been running before, uh, but uh, then uh, took on then a kind of like uh, you know a, a digital sort of like resource sharing uh, component which you can check out here uh, by simply typing you know uh, colonial Malay world history on. Uh, bit.ly uh, slash uh, colonial history of the Malay world, colonial history Malay world uh, sources. But, uh, you know, bearing in mind, this is also something that is already updated. It hasn't been updated for more than a few months, uh, for more than six months now. Uh, the idea is then to also see if there's a way to integrate uh, uh, a lot of these uh, resources that I've been building into the MARI ISSM uh, kind of system so that we have a much more kind of integrated kind of database. Uh, and, and that's where I'm coming from. My interest is really to re uh, populate the uh, late uh, 19th century and early 20th century now resources as well as uh, resources to do with, uh, 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 you know, artistic and cultural practices that might not necessarily fall within the umbrella of modern and contemporary art so that we do have a much more expanded sense of what the Malaysian art ecology would be like. Uh, uh, and uh, with the Zotero interface, I think you'll find that it's, uh, it might be a bit daunting at first sight, but it's actually quite an easy to use interface. And we will be sort of showing you a, a video that I uh, recorded earlier on how to, you know, navigate Zotero from uh, an editor's 
when when you have sort of like you know, an editorial uh, and, and edit when you are made an editor and you have sort of like members access to the group library system. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe Beth, you want to sort of like yeah. I mean, more about the content. And yeah. Stuff. Cheers. I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think also as as Simon's saying, you know, we all we all bring something that we want to 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 build into the library. Um, I think that that's the idea that um, you know all of you, is, if, if you're coming on as an editor, is to to bring your interests and, and add them. And the idea was also to work with different organizations, institutions with different um, you know digital archives or bodies of knowledge. And this is a way to try to bring it, put to, to build it together. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I, I we hope is kind of exciting about it. Um, and yeah, I'm 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 not I'm not a techie myself, so it's it has meant um, upskilling and learning things like Zotero. But it's now I think now is the time with um, software that's very user friendly. Um, literally, you can click and add things to the library, um, um, and then the editor's work really will be to. Um, upload stuff that you want to add to the index, but also to help organize it, right, and decide how to organize it. So um, our group has kind of started putting things in to give an in to test out um, how things will work. Um, but the idea is perhaps to have a big um, proper editorial meeting once we have a kind of um, uh, a, a fair contingent and then decide where to go from there. Um, if you look at the, the library that um, Simon shared, um, so structurally, yes, it's kind of horizontal. Basically, um, it's community driven. So it's everyone bringing something to the mat, um, to the library, and um, agreeing by consensus how how we work together. Uh, but I think it's so so far we've just kind of um, I think shall I share um, the the other interface, Simon, the other Zotero. Um, so. Oh, you, you've disabled them. Participant oh. screen sharing. Sorry. <laughs> um, I thought I, I I enabled it. Sorry. Go go ahead. Okay. So I will just do the tour on my side. Where that might be. Okay. All right. All right. So um, once you download the application, um, you can you can do it online through the browser or it's on your own application. Um, that we've started to do kind of um, folders and things where things can be uploaded. Um, and of course, these these categories will probably proliferate. Um, right, we started with the idea of texts and text digital online sources, um, but then once we started talking, we also started thinking, oh, how about podcasts? How about you know different forms of um, material that could be added? So it's a, it will become a kind of archive to some extent, but it's living, so it's current stuff. So so if we go and see a show that is really interesting online, that can go straight in um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm very excited about exhibition history, for example. Um, so Simon here has, I think, put things in, in um, chronological order. Um, so we will hopefully build up this extraordinary um, database of all the exhibitions that happened in, in the, a, a, a huge number of exhibitions that happened in the 2020s or, you know, um, and get this sense of, um, of what's gone on all this time. So I think that's, that's the idea. Um, really that's structurally, um, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to fund basically from the different um, affiliate, affiliations and from the public. So it will be um, at the moment, that one of the two of the partners can put, to, put something towards the running costs. We're running on a basic right now, like things like um, to pay a administrative editor or housekeeping editor and storage costs and stuff as a tarot. Um, so the idea is that um, in terms of responsibilities for editors, it's really to, to put things in um, and also uh, help to organize and decide on the organization of the index and, and projects that might go around it. Um, and then also, um, I think Simon can probably talk more a little bit about sort of doing metadata and making sure that all these different entries have descriptions that people can um, sort of understand the material and use it better um, and sort it better. So it, it, it can be kind of, um, it, can, it can help to, as editors, you're, you're, you're also telling stories and, and creating um, interesting readings from the, from the, from the library. Um, and the public is also, so editors will do that, but the public is also invited to just contribute stuff through forms so they can contribute links that they find are interesting. Anyone um, can just um, send in the form or write in an email and, 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 and add their 
add their links. Um, then, or they can also upload um, digital files um, up to a certain amount. So it will hopefully in time also go into a kind of digital archive that way. Um, uh, so, and, th and for this purpose, and also to organize ourselves, so we thought we would have a kind of rotating editor, a housekeeping editor who would manage the, the, manage the public contributions, also kind of moderate the conversation um, between the editors um, and, and things like that. Um, so that will be kind of an honorarium for the rotating editor, maybe every two months or three months. We, we need to all decide that between ourselves. Um, and obviously, um, it's a multilingual platform. Um, so we'd be looking for editors who are bilingual, at least Bahasa and English, and probably all, would definitely also needs, because um, there will be a lot of Chinese language material too, someone to, to help manage that over the year or two. So yeah. It's uh, open-ended. We hope it will run forever, obviously. <laughs> um, but um, you know, we start here with our, our group. Um, Notice that our Chinese and maybe Malay translation is a bit half past six, la. Yeah, so, yeah I, I Google translated everything and, and then, then everyone that, edited. And I also did my best and then got my partner to sort of like chip in, but then halfway he abandoned the project because he realized it's not being paid or being paid by me. And so <laughs> after that, then, you know, so if you, spot any mistakes and stuff like that you're encouraged <laughs> you know as edit as an editorial sort of like network it's a summer summer sort of the gotong royong to sort of make you know, the translation as smooth as possible uh, but as it stands now of course you'll notice that uh, you know the malay and chinese translation can be a bit keiko <laughs> yeah, sorry that's yeah um it's a joint responsibility so the more people who can help and you know um make it better um i think is the idea right um yeah um i think that's probably it on the on on the kind of um the structure of things um uh and and the material so if there's any questions um any, i think we've asked most are there any questions rising from that um before we move on Um, my question would be like, um, just say now, uh, who are the actual editors, uh, Beverly and Simon, right? Well, no, we, we also have on board um, Rahel at Ilham, um, Rahel Joseph, uh, Yapsal Bin, mm -hmm. and Rohanim Kairudin, um, okay. and Daniel Chong, um, Xiao, Xiao um, mm -hmm. who is here with us, and uh, um, Masita Masita G, who is based in London, and hopefully all of you. Yeah. So the idea is to grow as we go. She's in London. Um, I thought she's in Leeds. Or oh, Leeds, sorry. I think of yeah, <laughs> UK as London. Do we now? <laughs> she's in Leeds. Yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm myopia. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So the idea, we, we, we basically sort of tried to sort of think about the structure and how to put things in. And then the idea was always to get. Um, a, a large, a much larger network. It can be as sprawling as it, it wants to be um, to, to all collaborate together for the sort of joint responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So we really anticipate this, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not so much a case of too many cooks spoiling the broth, right? There would be so many different areas of what mm. we consider Malaysia art to cover and none of us can have our finger in every single pie and therefore I, uh, at some point, we're also hoping to engage with, uh, 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 you know, cultural workers who are working with uh, indigenous artists or indigenous art groups uh, to sort of like bring in the kind of like resources that have been building. Uh, I think Xiao will be, uh, hopefully will be very keen to sort of like help build up maybe the architecture and design. Uh, you know, kind of like component and resources and all of us in our own ways with our own sort of like respective interests will really help off the latest resources and learn from each other in the process uh, uh, so that we also have a general awareness of this larger ecology that we are part of that we would loosely call Malaysia art, right? And mm. it's not then just, you know. Um, my, my question is just um, like the fact that um, the editorial will be different than those who upload, right? I mean, uh, like the editors will be the one who sort 
and uh, but then um, other people like the public can um, send you all or email you all the materials, right? That's what I saw from the Google form, right? Um, it will no, actually editors will also upload the idea. The editors will be the mainstay of bringing the material in. Um, you know, the public contribution will be great. Um, we hope we will have public, but, but I think the driver will be the editors themselves. That's why kind of um, as broad as possible from different different fields of interest, different research um, interests and that kind of thing. So it really should be the, the editor's main thing is to bring in material and also um, uh, help sort and then also put the metadata in so that it's uh, it's sort of explained um, what the content is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the editor's role is quite quite broad in that sense. So maybe just to uh, clarify a bit, uh, it's a uh, two, two, eight, two, two step kind of like process. So that's the, contribute, the contribution sort of like side of things and everyone can contribute. And uh, if you're public, then you would use a form because that's the easy way for you to uh, contribute materials. You sort of like, you know, input your the thing that you want to contribute into a form you can upload a file or whatever file you want and then that form gets sent to our sort of like google server and then we'll have the material sort of like collected there and but the editor's role is really to then sort of like manage the group library on zotero together mm -hmm. uh and so uh yeah, run, uh or one of the responsibilities of course to then uh bring in the materials, the contribution into our Zotero library, sift and organize it. But uh, over time, I think uh, the more kind of like, uh, the more creative role that we will eventually play is really to start annotating those material so that it can be easily retrievable for the public so that uh, you write short, um, you know, introductory sort of like text on what these materials are. We'll create met meta, uh, uh, sort of like the metadata so that we know what the content of the material is but also uh, create tags so that they can be linked across different folders right uh, so imagine if there's yeah. an, something in the exhibition folder <laughs> and, yeah, you know another folder like that shares the same sort of like thematic concerns or issues they can be then sort of like you know share same kind of share same consistent tag that then uh, users would then be able to sort of like you know explore the various linkages between different materials across different folders as well so that we make uh, the materials much more uh, interlinked like, and connected mm -hmm. so that they're in conversation with one another and we are able to sort of like explore uh, different kinds yeah. of like connection as well uh, amongst the different materials yeah. uh, that previously maybe you know having a material in an indigenous art folder and uh, an architecture folder might initiate might 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 seem like might seem like they're worlds apart or disciplines apart, but there might be specific materials that share thematic or issue based sort of like concern. Yeah. Tags. Like concern, then tags would help us to then allow for uh, to create this kind of like new constellation of linkages and networks mm -hmm. to this material so that uh, it allows for the users to explore this in a much more either new, intuitive, or creative manner. Yeah, and and once you have that there, there are ways to develop that into other formats, right? If if given the you know uh, will or you know people can use this for their projects in their own way um, mm -hmm. by using this resource on a very practical level, um, Serena. So editors will go straight into Zotero. So all editors will have access to the Zotero library, and they can directly put things into folders um, or into the mm -hmm. sort folder kind of thing. So yeah, whereas the public have to use a form or just email in to get their stuff sorted, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, of course, we're very aware that some editors, of course, uh, are maybe a bit more, uh, I'm not so comfortable uh, uh, using the the Zotero interface. And if uh, that's, a, that's too steep a learning curve, then there's always a to sort folder that's there where they can just at least sort of like dump the material there. So those of us who are more familiar with the technology can then help to also sort it. So it's a process of also trying to make sure that it's a gotong royong and let's help each other. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, the spirit of uh, let's help each other to sort of like, you know, work together to sort these materials out so that they can be uh, yeah. in many ways much more accessible and uh, discoverable to the general public. 
no it's just uh, um because i mean i have no problem with this and actually it's long due actually um because i have stuff in my collections as well and like you know i've been collecting like randoms uh, i don't know people email me random pdfs and things like that i'm getting yeah exactly right exactly this is the idea right everyone has their own everyone has their own funny folder right to stop everything so now we start yeah, to sort you know, i don't know it's that. everywhere now like i couldn't like even like, recall which folder so i thought like you know because so young is my actually my ga graduate assistant uh, in one of my uh, research project so I thought that, you know, um, and also, of course, she's doing her master's as well. So um, if she can go through, like when you, you email me, Beverly, you were not talking about like USM, how can USM, you know, uh -huh. be part of this, okay? I mean, like, I mean, um, you can use the, the SOTA and USM logo on uh, as one of the, I don't know, like co-ed. Taki lah. No, it's, we call it like Taki, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one of the institution. But then, okay, I'll be responsible in as in, being one of the editors, but most of the works will be done um, in the next stage will be my GA. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, because then she she can also, because she just start, started, she can also go through my materials, which could also be related to her research project. And like, she can also like sort this out, um, you know, uh, in this sense and send it to you all. And, you know, depending on how tech savvy she is, <laughs> maybe a little bit of, you know, like, how to sort uh things can in, in that way actually can help um i'm Great. just thinking about that 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 that's the way how sort of like usm con can contribute on this Mm. That's great. And I'll, I'm sure there's also kind of, um, I don't, you know, your own publications as well and whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you've got archives of stuff eventually. Um, if you're yeah, yeah. doing digital archive, that could help. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. And like uh, students come, they want, you know, uh, refer to, you know, so whatever physical old syntax and stuff like that, what they do is that they take the picture you know, take images and I ask them to convert to PDFs and things like that, right? So, you know, that could be, then they will send me a copy then they, and I just don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, so this is, yeah. <laughs> so through WhatsApp, I'm getting, I'm losing track of everything. <laughs> Okay. So I think eventually uh, it will be a good place sort of to sort of like contribute because just in case, you know, you know, computer gets accidentally reformatted and things like that. At least yeah. <laughs> we will try to keep up. There should be a backup copy, et cetera, et cetera, of the <laughs> library, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anybody, yeah. Anyone else have, have questions? That is so cool. I'm looking forward to working we, with you. We guys. also have uh, CIE who just joined us. And I wonder if CIE, you want to uh, quickly uh, unmute yourself to say hello or say hello in the text box and introduce yourself. If you're up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. We can hear you. Hi, yeah. No, I'm. I was really interested when I when you first posted about all this. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, Hi. I'm actually not a writer or editor or curator or any sort with any academic background. I'm just an artist. Um, I might be really interested to um, submit photographs, I think. Uh, I'm a photographer and a visual artist as well. So I'm actually really curious to find out, um, yeah, like what are you, are you actually looking for the public or like you know in general to also submit work or is it just like a you know a curated selection based off you know mm -hmm. well the public are invited to send their contributions through a for, through the form um in terms of then where it fits into the library that's what we we we, we, we would still be discussing um mm -hmm. so so things like uh, it's not really a kind of because it will be generally used by researchers um, i think we don't know um, for uh, uh, for whatever purposes, um, rather than as a general index, um, a general resource. So because it's not pretty, you you won't have a website where you can see your pictures easily. You'd have to kind of uh, search around. So it's not like a, a digital platform in that sense. It's more like a research a research library um, and an archive. So so um, we we haven't really discussed in terms of how we would be filing things like artists um, work but at the moment it's more like sort of if you have existing catalogs for example um, of your work then that's something that you could send in through the contributors um, form so yeah so this 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 open day is I guess yeah more about um, if, if you want to get involved in 
and helping to put things into the library and, and, and organizing that. But as the public, then yeah, it's through the four budget. And then, we, and then the editors would see how they would, how we could fit it in the material as such. Yeah. So yeah, that's the very interesting thing that you've raised. We've never mm. thought of like creating artist portfolios. Yeah, it, it has crossed my mind, Simon, but <laughs> we haven't run up. Yeah. This sort of, yeah. Okay. But yeah. maybe uh, one way to think about it is if you have a website already, or, ah, yes. I'm sure you do, or, or, or an Instagram account of like your existing work and stuff like that, I think uh, we would definitely want to at least have that. that yeah, so that... that that does that make sense yeah 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 i think that's that's good mm -hmm. yeah cool. what about the scanning quality yeah because like um like not that we have uh some firstly high resolution um you know scanner <laughs> would the would the you know you know uh, image taken from the phone as long as it's legible will be like good enough you know my collection of the the scanned copies of frank sullivan's material mm. is taken on a phone five years ago <laughs> uh, that i'll be putting in so that's all i have right <laughs> uh, so yeah. whatever quality that we have like, i yeah. think uh, mm -hmm. As long as um, you know those materials are in some ways beneficial and useful mm -hmm. to the general mm -hmm. public, and it doesn't contravene any sort of like copyright mm -hmm. kind of like uh, you know the legal. If there are ways, yeah, we make sure that it doesn't con uh, contravene. Uh, yeah. Yes. In so copyright laws. Yeah. Uh, so we were discussing this thing about, I mean, problem well, with archives is always, you know, how do you get permission to include material and stuff like that? But um, that's the whole. That's one of the big. Issue I, ideas about getting everybody involved. So each institution, if they are publishers themselves, will be contributing. So that's already a given that it's part of the you know library. Also because it it focuses on existing digital links. So mm -hmm. that's already up. It's already you know gen, it's already in public domain. So that that also irons out that issue. Of course, once you get sort of more personal materials and people want to start giving their stuff in. Um, or let's say you know someone's found a you know family you know, some a friend's archive or something like that. Then then these were more blurry areas. Um, what 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 we we kind of decided was to give an option for any copyright owners to you know object or etc. Or if if it was found to um, infringe anyone's um, copyright, then we would you know um, consider taking down something you know. Um, but. But the idea is to build knowledge, right? Um, so it's an, it's it's not commercial. It's um, although people can download um, the material, or public can download things from the library. Yeah, um, uh, we just keep keep it open as possible. I just wonder because, like, um, I think in the in, in the recent years, there's a lot of um, you know hand butchers catalog, for example. Online, yes. Yes. Right? Would would the Zotero link goes to the Henry Butcher website or go to the individual catalogs? Because they have like you know, have those PDFs version or any like. Well, uh, so safe so safe storage. I guess we would uh, we would we would we would try to do it online. But of course, the PDF catalogs possibly will be more long term. Um, I don't know. That's a question that we should all bring up, right, Simon? Something uh, something so, yeah, to one one way to think about it. To, uh, the the ideal is that someone invested enough say in well, auction houses and stuff like that would one day download all the catalogs oh, we, would, yeah. we would raise enough money and then we could also sort of like host those sort of like uh, those auction catalogs onto our server if someone if there's an editor invested in you know, oh, but my thing would just be to get Henry Butcher to do it themselves, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Also, maybe yeah. getting galleries yeah. yes. or you know to do it themselves actually, or you know actually give all the PDFs because like uh, Valentine, uh, not Valentine. Sorry, um, what's the other gallery in uh, that just moved? Uh, yeah, no, but short Richard, Cole, Richard Cole, right? They, they they also have a lot of online. Yeah, as well. but short of someone uh, invested in that kind of like area of. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, resource building is that we would at least have a link to Richard Scholes website yeah. and or if there's enough sort of like interest then also sort of like there are also different folders right so there's mm -hmm. catalog folders where we can sort of like put in the individual uh, links to the catalog that they've uploaded on their server uh, uh -huh. or you know yeah. if 
if there's someone you know have that energy to sort of like uh, yeah. download the thing and upload here then you can do it so it's really depending on yeah. what is the interest mm -hmm. of the editorial sort of like network as well because each yeah. of us have sort of like different areas of interest and it's driven very much by our interest mm -hmm. and what we're willing to sort of like put in and yeah. I, I do think that that is a very like pertinent question though about like longevity of links especially on the internet you know and yeah, yeah like hyperlinks always get taken down or like websites die and then like yeah. a, like there's just yeah. a graveyard of dead links floating around the internet right so I guess it's a question of like do we do we like try to archive a version of the site like you know like how web archive does it um, or like in archive of the internet does it um, but I think that it's like a larger question about like longevity in general. Yeah, yes, I think uh, it's something to bring up, definitely. Yeah, uh, right. I, I think as we raise enough okay. sort of like funds uh, in order to uh, bring in more paid, uh, because this is sort of like paid work, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, and also build up that kind of like infrastructure in order to sort of like do that kind of like archival work. Definitely, mm -hmm. uh, the ideal is that we'll reach that one day. La. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to add that here. All right, any other questions from anybody else first? <laughs> How often would the um, editors meet? Um, it's also something to decide. We hope once a <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, hopefully once a, I think once a month probably is once enough, I think, you know. Um, but yeah, but maybe in the, in the first developmental stage, it's good to, to, to be more active together in the conversation, even on Discord or whatever it is. Um, yeah, we were thinking maybe aiming for um, a, a proper meeting on the 18th um, or around there and, and before, 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 the, before the end of the year break um, to really thrash things out with whoever decides they want to commit to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When we decide we, we want to join maybe on the 18th, we set aside uh, about two hours or two and a half hours where we sit down uh, and we'll try to use the Discord chat uh, voice yeah. channel. Uh, so that we don't have to sort of like turn on our camera and stuff like that and we can mm -hmm. go through sort of like chatting and um, you know uh, the Discord sort of like voice channel to uh, uh, work collaborative online like, on you know at least yeah. setting some parameters uh, for the beginning of this sort of like database that we want to build. Anyone else? Yeah. Simon launches into his tutorial <laughs> no need I don't, I don't know if we need to i think we can just share the link okay yeah uh, and then uh, uh, more importantly uh, maybe is to get a sense uh, a head count like who, who is uh, if we've scared you off or you think <laughs> that you might be interested to you know come on board and join us or if you want time to think about it, of course, you can also email us at any point if you register your interest. So the next step is, of course, if you're interested, we will be inviting you on to the, uh, to the Discord uh, group, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And that's where we normally sort of like work in uh, and we can work quite asynchronously. Uh, so that you know all of you will i'm sure have very very busy schedule and uh, i think that's a nice enough sort of communication platform that allows us to sort of like communicate and keep track of the different kind of conversational threads uh, that uh, you know uh, so you can set up for example uh, if you're interested in chinese language uh, sources uh, then we can set up a thread you can set up a text channel focusing on that and Hopefully, uh, over time, there will be enough editors who are interested in that particular sort of like topic or area of interest to be able to focus on that material. I'll be, I'm very keen to sort of like, you know, get some kind of like uh, Jawi sort of like text group going as well. So like uh, um, at some point, I'll be set sort of like setting up that kind of like channel. So I, I think we want to sort of like, you know, use that sort of uh, the, the text channel uh, function in order to also set up uh, maybe uh, like special uh, interest groups. Does everyone know what Discord like looks like? I'm just going to share. Yeah, you want to introduce? Yeah, so it, should, it kind of looks like this. So Beverly is a pro now. 
<laughs> no, I'm not a pro. I'm still learning, but it's fun. It's really fun. I mean, I'm an old person, you know, <laughs> playing with uh, what, what, you know, I can talk to Serena's kids now, right? Um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so it looks like this. It's like an old fashioned, what I imagine an old fashioned chat room used to look like, but with um, very. Um, IRC, yeah. if you know what it is. <laughs> um, so, so you, you, you have a kind of a, like a, a chat. Whoop. I'm very slow computer, unfortunately. Um, eh? I think I'm frozen. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. No, so no, it's it's, it's basically threads that on the different subjects and uh, a kind of chat room, I guess. So for our open day, we had an open day thread to help organize, you know, this event. So we're having conversation about how we're going to put this together and using the sort of text channel with the hashtag, it helps you to sort of like organize the organizational. Uh, to, to help to organize those sort of like different threads of conversation that's happening so that when you want to find information about, you know, that particular conversational thread, it's easy to locate, right? Otherwise, it might, if you imagine if we were to use sort of like WhatsApp to find sort of like old messages, it will be just a nightmare <laughs> if there are multiple conversations, uh, not multiple topics going on at once. Yeah, so it looks like that. So the thing, the one thing we'll be doing, like in the first or in the run up to the first thing, would be just to kind of figure out what threads we need, how do we organize ourselves, how often we meet. Um, obviously, we also need to to sort of um, see who can uh, is willing to moderate and be um, our first <laughs> um, sort of housekeeping editor, or if it's a group of us to begin with, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that would be the next steps, really. Um, there's my list. Yeah. And what you can do is upload images, and of course, you respond also with emojis. So that's that element that with stickers and emojis, right? Uh, that that takes communication and expressiveness to another level. Uh, even as we are separated by distance, uh, and then uh, what you will notice is under the text channel, there's also the, the voice. voice channel. Uh, in the voice channel. Each channel hosts, uh, if you were to use uh, its video cam function, it hosts up to 25 video cameras at one go. But otherwise, it's principally a voice, voice to voice kind of like communication channel. So as you enter the channel, then uh, you don't have to turn on your camera. And we can all be in our pajamas and still <laughs> together. <laughs> but I, I, I love the best thing about Discord is that yeah you can walk away and come back to a conversation whereas WhatsApp is almost impossible and you know um, and conversations are forgotten you know so yeah uh, it's a great way to organize so Simon back to your question then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was my question? Um, who's interested? Anyone wants to commit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that Xiao has already raised her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, Serena, Intan, Taoyang, uh, Xiaoyu. Uh, feel free to say you'll think of it, you'll, you'll sleep on it. Uh, you'll also, if, if, you, if you don't think that this is something that you're comfortable, uh, you're, you're ready to sort of like, you know, put in so much time into it, that's fine too. So right now, as an editor, it's just uh, upload whatever we have or to sort what's already uploaded, right? Yeah, basically, um, yes. And then also sort of get, get engaged into the conversation about how we organize it. That, I think that's pretty much it, no, Simon? Oh, what um, we've been discovering, right? So if you feel like gaming culture is really an important thing to also consider as part of Malaysian art. And there's a very interesting Malaysian gaming subculture with enough blogs, enough sort of like resources, yeah. enough things that you want to create a folder on. Why not? Yeah. I think that's really an exciting area to sort yeah. of like bring in and, uh, and think about in relation to also art because so much of our metaverse interface and things like that begins with, you know, in the gaming world and so we want to also then see how that speaks to, say, the digital art community here in Malaysia and what they're doing. 
uh, and also uh, uh, and, and see how other sort of like uh, communities or art communities are also sort of like leveraging on the same kind of like platforms and interface uh, uh, and, and where they where they meet so uh, right so so that's that's something that you personally uh, can bring in but also join on the knowledge and this kind of resources that you're already building and you will be building yeah, and, and that, I think I think the other thing is there's no kind of time frame on this. I mean, it's as you go, um, you know, um, obviously the meetings will take time. And I think the principle will be if you don't come to the meeting, you don't get a you don't get your say in there or, or you, if you don't put your say in, you just don't have a say. Um, that's going to fit how it works. But other than that, there's no there's no huge um, pressure um, except on the actual housekeeping editor who will have a kind of actual role um, with a small honorarium. Um, you, it's kind of up to you, um, you know. I, I, I mean, you can't put your name there and not do anything la, at all, <laughs> but, you know? um, but yeah. But I, I think we want to make it as creative as, yeah. get you to sort of like, uh, get all of us to be as creative as possible. Uh, so I can imagine like, Christy, when you said that you're part of a Cantonese of program uh, for practice, <laughs> Uh, you know, it just reminded me of the 1950s where uh, the, the people sort of like Alan Powell, for example, doing research on this uh, lesbian opera couple mm -hmm. who used to sort of like travel through Malaysia, Malaya and down Nanyang and stuff like that. And then building up that kind of like resources, uh, I, I feel have a place in this archive to really help to populate and uh, at least grow our resources on uh, even earlier kind of like, uh, yeah, earlier materials, archival materials that we don't normally would consider under the umbrella of Malaysian art, but mm -hmm. broader sort of like, you know, visual culture or, you know, performing arts and related sort of like field that you feel might, uh, yeah, might have, might be in conversation with, you know, yeah, like, um, she also has a trove of other stuff that she can upload. Love, we know. Right? <laughs> she has a trove. She's a master. So yeah. No, um, no I'm well. I'm really interested in the project, and I think it's important to. Um, I guess I have a few areas where I can contribute, like um, social practice in Malaysia, where my MA works on, and I also work on this Hakka and Abazo mission uh, research, uh, where you know the migration of uh sub uh the Hakka migration in Sabah, they are kind of related to some uh, Christian missionary uh, history. And also uh, maybe the woodcut project that I'm still developing. And, but I'm not very into Cantonese opera. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what Simon just mentioned is, is yeah, something very interesting. And you can create a Hakka track, go, go look at all the temples. Uh, all the temple plots and identify all the uh, interesting kind of like uh, you know patrons or stuff like that you know the different kinds of like resources that we can find on yeah, 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 yeah. totally agree on that uh, but my i have to say it now uh, my schedule is really full till like next june so if i am to you know take on one of the uh, 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 responsibility uh, responsibility editor you know maybe that is you know, the second half of next year okay yay okay yeah and no problem and i i don't think we are we're, we're imposing this on anyone so uh, as and when you feel like you can contribute and and you manage your own time. You you know your time management better than we do. So uh, you want to prioritize which uh, areas of interest you want to work on first. Yeah, you feel you start a thread. Uh, see if we can gather interest and you know a community of yeah. interest to sort of like you know start thinking about that and others can sort of like chip in. So you can... Yeah, sure. Sounds great. Uh, so if, uh, for example, I have some old catalogs from Balai from 80s or 90s, so that's not permissible, right? Um, I think they are supposed to be doing it, right, Simon? I don't know. Um, but You want to check if Balai has already scanned it, so you don't want to... Yeah, it. yeah. Um, like, we hope to get Balai on board, la, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. And we just like take the link from someone else. Like it, since they already done it, then we don't feel up. Uh, uh, it's in, they have some have done some scanning work, but uh, if you find that it's not online yet, uh, maybe if we can secure permission or, or some level. But what I tend to do is upload it onto LitGen. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but anonymously. <laughs> I just recorded Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll share the recording after all. Okay, um, I'll edit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. Some of the older balai quote unquote catalogs, which is actually brochures. Like I have those. I have Great. Those. Yeah. Yeah, I have those. So it's it's a few pages. It's usually sixties, sixties. That is just a couple of pages. Um, on each catalog. So. Um, I know like by line on their website, but I don't know if still there, there are already scanned um, or digitized, uh, but I think that's more recent. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they, they would really even care in digitizing yeah. all the stuff. <laughs> oh no, it is. Well, <laughs> I, I think the thing is that we will try to start a conversation with Balai and see if you know um, some of them will be on board and also to, to, to see how we can all work together with their art because I think they're also digitizing so how do we overlap with their with their archive as yeah, well actually, right? um, it, it yeah. actually in charge of the Pusat Sumber actually now in terms of structure it's, no 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 Pusat Sumber is in, in Balai's Pusat Sumber yeah. Shao is raising hand Are you raising hand or saying goodbye goodbye okay bye bye yeah. Shao I did speak to Zanita yesterday uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she's definitely keen to, you know, in some way support. Of course, they have the art mm. system thing this week. So I, I think some conversation will happen. Mm. We, we will yeah. be sort of like, uh, we should all have a conversation with them. And definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then in principle, you know, she's all for, you know, mm. doing this in a Kotongoryong way. Mm. Because they do have like, um, you know, a new you know, newspaper cuttings and things like that in which they scan, they which they scan and put in the each individual artist folder. So that would be just useful as well, actually, to be to have that included here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I have a box of um, you know, newspaper cuttings, um, you know, from NSD and stuff like oh, that. Oh, fantastic! Wow, yeah, really, yay. Uh, yeah, but but actually, it was actually a, a, an older and elder student who donated or gave it to me it was his collection mm -hmm. so because he doesn't know what to do with it anymore and uh, probably he, he thought that I'll be you know I'll find it more useful mm -hmm. so I thought of you know if if um through Saudi or through any GA that's working with me so that could be actually you know mm, yeah, taken by the headphone because I don't have the, I don't have the big <laughs> <laughs> and it has been in a box for a long time. I, you know, I just sort of like browse through. Okay. But yeah, th th those kind of stuffs, you know, those kind of stuffs that, uh, you know, things that we printed like 20 years ago for research that's not available on the website anymore. Yeah. yeah. I think those are all very, very useful. And what we can do is then make sure that in the metadata, we also uh, acknowledge uh, mm. uh, the person who contributed mm. those papers mm. and things like that. And, uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, a, a paper trail. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A paper trail, yeah. And, and the acknowledgement, uh, do all the acknowledgement properly and recognize mm -hmm. the kind of like community building, the collective, uh, mm -hmm. the collaborative sort of like process in which this aspect mm -hmm. I don't mind uh, coming like as, you know, as the USM uh, face on the editorial board, but it's just like the. Um, the nitty gritty of because I have stuff, so the nitty gritty have to be done by the GA, um, because I don't really have time to actually, um, you know, do an uploading and things like that. Because, yeah, cool. We'll just we'll just get everybody in the conversation. That's cool, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I, I like to be in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we won't we won't hold you to yeah. Like you don't wait for your GA, you can always put the stuff in the resort folder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that, that's what I'm thinking like, um, you know, I'm getting this uh, more and more disorganized. <laughs> and then the, then the rest of the editorial community will find time to then sort out the material. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, yeah. And okay. I mean, CIE, if, if, if um, you know, you're somebody who browses a lot and is very sort of I don't know, I, Simon, I don't know if Xiaoyi is saying if she might want to help, but she's not sure how. Um, yeah, if you're genuinely interested, I think you should come on and just sort of like try out. Uh, we have, uh, I, I recorded an introduction to Zotero video that you can, you know, sit through and, you know, play with the Zotero kind of like interface. And uh, in, in many ways, we also value inputs of sort of like artists and 
I'm, I'm sure, you know, as the resource grows, it will be beneficial to your practice as well as an artist, right? Awesome, great. So, um, can we like get a folder for a uh, certain artist? <laughs> uh, th there's, I think, hang on, let me just share. At the moment, but we try to keep it as neutral as possible in terms of the in terms of the folder, so that the tags will work um, also as a search way of searching things. Um, at the moment, General Resources has a uh, artist sites and blogs, so existing sites and blogs. Um, but I think as Simon was saying, in terms of actually having like um, artist folders, we haven't really discussed that yet. So maybe it's something to bring up in the, the, the big meeting. Um, yeah. um, but you're thinking of catalogs or are you thinking of actual kind of like images and stuff like that? Like news written about them. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've got, so here, here we've got like, for example, um, reviews. Um, so, that, so, so it wouldn't go in an artist folder, it would go into reviews um, and then you know that the name will be there. You can tag, or we can discuss. We can all discuss how 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 that works. Yeah. Um, and also, there can I guess maybe later on we can there can be meta tagging, right? Say if it's a you know well known enough artist, or say if there's a collection of writing or an artist estate or something like that. Uh, well known enough artists. Then we can sort of like you know uh, build. Yeah find a way to sort of like design new categories like that. Yeah. But that's all up for discussion. Like that's on yeah, I mean, yeah. The thing was just to keep it so that people, there's enough, basically so that you can, people can just access enough things on one column as such. would be one of the challenges, right? As we build many, many categories, how the best way to sort it is. So it's trying to be neutral right now, but of course that will bleed as we know, <laughs> yeah. I'm highly likely going to take an archival study program next year in Hong Kong. So maybe I can contribute a little bit on how an archive should be later. Yeah, like you no know, categories and how you show things to the public. Oh, yay. Hey, so we will put everyone's name down, right? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Correct. Any objections? Okay, at least the, the ones who have showed up. I, I imagine everyone says yeah, you're saying yes, and then we can send out the link to our Discord. Mm. And the library, right? I will also invite, we'll need, we'll need your emails and then we can invite you to the Zotero um, interface as well. So you can play with it. Yes? Yeah. If not sure, put it into sort, okay? <laughs> to sort, <laughs> if not sure. Yeah. And, then, uh, and are we all all right to aim for 18th of uh, December for maybe our first editorial meeting? Mm. It will be a Saturday, probably in the morning from 10 to 12, or something like that. Okay. Uh, just to sort of like, you know, uh, get some things going. Like, otherwise, if we break for too long and start in January again, then, oh my God, to start, <laughs> get the process going again, you know, <laughs> it'd be like sort of like dragging our feet. <laughs> so, so, so maybe we thought that we should at least sort of meet before the year closes uh, so that we can sort of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, really start, uh, uh, shaping out, uh, giving more shape to the parameters yeah. that we've already built. Okay. Yeah, he said yes to okay. message okay. box. Okay. Wonderful. Good. Uh, so, okay. So, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for showing up and you know, making time to join us in our open day. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I guess, uh, uh, Bev will be uh, sending uh, everyone the invitation to the payroll and also the, uh, you'll be receiving an email uh, invitation to the Zotero, uh, uh yeah. library as well as the Discord channel and a link to the Discord channel. So for Discord, what you can do is uh, download the app on your phone 
So it's really like a WhatsApp kind of like app, or you can also sort of like use it on your computer depending on uh, how comfortable you are having another app on your phone. Because I know some of you don't want <laughs> another thing on your phone, but uh, I like it on my phone because it then it makes it quite interactive as well. So, so uh, I like the uh, Discord for also kind of like social space for us to uh, have a conversation. Uh, and and so talk about uh, uh, silly other other things other than you know and share concerns other than also the serious work that we're doing. Um, uh, Beverly, can you later send the recording of the session as well because Saoyang her line is not good, so she okay. Gets, yeah, she wants sure. to sure, sure, sure. Um, um, I'll rec uh, I'll upload it onto uh my YouTube and then after that I'll share the link uh, and then we can include that in the email that Beth is going to send out. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, I was going to say on the terror, you can use the terror on your phone, but the but the um auto <laughs> the auto upload thing doesn't work so well yet. So if you want to be adding things that well, you'll you'll see from Simon's tutorial, but. The thing is that you you can't at the moment, Simon. Right, you can't really quickly add to your library from the phone. Yeah, no, I. I yeah, you have to do it on your computer. It's too heavy, I think. Yeah. Uh, but in any way, it's a step-by-step -step guide, uh, uh, teaching you how to use it. If you want to use a browser to upload materials, or you want to download their uh, software into your computer, and that makes it also, that that allows for quite easy kind of like uh, uploading materials onto your Terra as well. Okay. 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 Have a happy weekend, everybody. All right. And thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Take care, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.